Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and I feel like I owe you all an apology. It's been, uh, feels like a really long time since my last 3D printing video where I threw a 3D printer off a cliff, or more accurately, my son did. <sighs> Good times. Need to do that again sometime. Of course, the reason why it's been so long, as I mentioned in that video, is that the next major 3D printing campaign has been decided, and it is going to be print a quest and i have been working really hard on doing the 3d modeling for this and writing up the rules for it and making the modular dice for it i mean that's just plain cool so many exciting things that i want to share with you about this project but today i want to talk about something that i saw on a online discussion group about 3d printing where somebody asked a question that sounded a lot like something that i asked a long time ago and their question made me realize that my position has changed since making that first video. The question is, why are we all still using STLs when there is a much better file format out there in 3MFs? And yeah, that is something a lot like what I said in the past, except when I said it, 3MFs had not been adopted by the community very much, and now they have been, and unfortunately it's kind of ruined 3MFs for me. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's talk about what each of these file formats has. Let's do a little detour through a couple of other file formats that we can discuss as well, and let's see if we can answer the question of what really is the best file format for 3D printing. So to begin with, let's talk about STL. And I'm gonna just keep a real brief history lesson here. The STL file format was created for 3D printing by the man who invented 3D printers, Chuck Hole, for his first 3D printer. Why do we call them STLs? Well, because Chuck Hole did not call his first 3D printer a 3D printer, he called it a stereo lithography machine, and that nomenclature lives on in the STL format. Now, the STL file format really is nothing but a list of points in triplets that describe triangles, and hopefully all of those triangles mesh together to create a 3D shape. And that's it. That is all that is described in an STL, really. And quite frankly, that is not sufficient, especially for modern 3D printing. Now, the first sign that there was something amiss was when people started to use the STL file format to allow people to export from their CAD programs. See, if the user had set up their CAD system to work in inches, the STL would be exported with inches as its unit measurement. However, there is nothing in the STL file format that sets up and says, this file's in inches, this file's in millimeters. And it's not really Chuck's fault. He made some assumptions. He assumed that in the file format, if you describe a space from zero to one, that was one millimeter. That was just an assumption. We could say it was a standard, but it was never really written down. So when other people took that and made that zero to one to be one inch, all of a sudden that messed things up. And quite frankly, I blame people for just not doing what everybody assumed they were gonna do. But STLs have some other shortcomings. Uh, for instance, with modern 3D printers that are now printing in multiple materials, there is no way to describe in an STL that this area is this material, this area is this material. There's no way to describe multiple overlapping objects. In fact, there's nothing in an STL that describes an object. Like I say, it's just a pile of triangles that hopefully lines up and creates a shape. It's, it's a little bit loose, honestly. Now, I should mention that STLs do work. They function, they do what they set out to do in the first place, and that's good. But there is obviously some room for improvement. Now, before I jump in and talk about 3MF, I wanna talk about another file format that does kind of answer some of these questions, and that is the OBJ file format. Now, OBJ gets points for having a name that actually makes sense. It describes objects. However, strangely enough, the OBJ file format 
also doesn't have scale data. There's nothing in the OBJ file format that says that this object is a certain size. That's because it's describing video game objects, not objects in the real world. However, OBJs do have color information. They define regions of their surface. They say this area is one color, this area is another color, and they also define areas that could be kind of like wallpapered with a flat texture wrapped around it. In fact, most video game objects use this UV mapping, we call it, to create shapes that have a lot more detail on their surface, even though the shape itself is very simple in its geometry. Now that wallpapering technique is less useful to us with modern multi-material machines, although it was useful for a type of 3D printer that I am also going to be destroying in a future video, but we don't need to worry too much about that. The fact that OBJs does have some color data, it, it makes me think that why aren't we using that to describe objects in, in 3D printing? We could potentially say, okay, this object has these regions of color, and in the slicer, I'm going to paint this region to be that material and that region to be that material. And we could potentially use that if slicers were willing to use that. One disadvantage though, is that oftentimes OBJs have not just four or six or eight areas of color, they have dozens, sometimes a hundred regions of color in one object, and that can be overwhelming. Still, as a designer, I would like to be able to take my objects, which I've already colored a lot of the time so that I can make pretty renders of them, and export them with that color region data on there so that it could be used in the 3D printer to more easily color the information. But uh, you know what? Right now, that's not what people are doing. I wish that they would. But even so, as I said, OBJ doesn't answer the scale problem, so it's not really suitable as a replacement for STLs. So that brings us to the 3MF file format. Now, the 3MF file format is brilliant. And the reason why I was advocating for it in the past is because well, let me explain the 3MF file format a little bit for you. Imagine it, that it's a box. In reality, it's a zip file, but imagine that it's a box. And it's a box that you can put anything you want in there. Now, the file format does require that it have a 3D payload in there, so you better put that in your STL. But do you want to be able to describe the recommended print settings for this particular file? Well, you can go ahead and sprinkle those in. Do you want to have a, a picture preview of it? Yeah, no problem. We got space in there for that. It's just a zip file. We can put anything we want in there. Uh, let's see, what else? do you want to take an executable file that could destroy somebody's computer and put it in there? Yeah, no, it, I, it'll take it. Although, quite frankly, I don't see how it will ever be executed because there is no... STL reader that I know of that goes, oh, that's an executable file. I should just run it without thinking about it. So I don't think that that's a problem, though it does make some people nervous. But you get the idea. It's just a box that you can put anything in. And that means that it's future proof. Because if at some point in the future we have some new thing that we need to have some new information, like for instance, color data or multiple objects in there, no problem, it's a box, we can put that in there. However, that nature of being a box that you can just shove everything into is also its downside. Because as people started to use 3MFs, just like when they started to use STLs and ignored the assumptions, and in this case, even standards that these were built on, they started to make 3MF files that weren't useful for sharing 3D print files. For instance, some manufacturers, especially if they have fancy 3D printers that were different than other ones, said, well, we've got some weird print settings and we don't want to write a whole new slicer. Let's just make a 3MF file that has all of the print settings in there. After all, this is made for holding print settings. Except also, it's supposed to have a 3D payload, guys. You have to describe a shape in there. And they said, well, okay, we'll just describe a, an empty shape. There we go. But it gets even worse because when Bamboo Labs started to adopt 
3MF. It was the biggest mass adoption of 3MF that the community had had. They made a mistake. They also ignored the payload, or at least they ignored the default payload. They created their own payload that had color information stored on it, and they stored it over here. Not over here where it's supposed to be, over there. Which meant that when people saw their 3D print files and said, ooh, that's neat, I want to get it, and they tried to open it because it is a 3MF file, the 3MF file said, there's no geometry in here. No, it's just over there, you just can't see it. And I think that this is important. There were a lot of 3MF files generated that had their 3D data in the wrong place and uploaded online there are so many of them that even though now Bamboo Labs has fixed it, they have properly put the 3D data where it belongs that represents the 3D shape and then they have their color data somewhere else. But while they have fixed it now, there are so many 3MF files out there that were done wrong that when you open up a 3MF file now, you don't know whether you're getting a good one or a bad one, and it has shaken people's confidence in 3MF files so much that when they see a 3MF file, they immediately think, ah, oh, that probably doesn't even have what I want now. It's a shame. Now, 3MF has uh, some more downsides as well. For instance, remember I said that it can store print settings. Well, which print settings for which 3D printing process? Because not everybody is using FDM, and quite frankly, we won't all be using FDM forever. There will probably be a new format in the future, to which people say, yes, well, that's fine, we can just ignore those settings, unless those settings have similar names. Yeah, because nobody bothered to make a chart of this means this, this means this, because they wanted it to be as open and extendable as possible, meaning that anybody could add to that in the future. In other words, by trying to be everything to everybody all at once, 3MF kind of ended up being nothing to anybody in a weird way. Uh, so what's the right answer here, right? Uh, 3MF obviously isn't working anymore because we've messed that up, but STL still doesn't have what we need and there's no real answer. Editing room Joe jumping in here because I did not realize I had so much to talk about when it came to file formats and this video is just running way too long. I already cut out a whole section where I put step files on blast and I forgot to mention AMF files. AMF is a file format that was at one point called STL2. It was pretty much, it's a file format. It's not a bucket that we just throw things into. And it could very well be the answer to every concern that I have, but like its predecessors and even followers, it's probably going to get ruined the moment we start using it because we are the reason why we can't have nice things, I guess. And that's just, I guess, the way that it is. And so the answer is not, why shouldn't we be using this format over that format? The answer is, use what we got and do cool things with it. I mean, if you got a simple file that you don't need to get all fancy with, use STL. If you got something fancy that needs something specific and, and machine specific for it, then use a machine specific 3MF. Use what we got. Don't be like, well, we should abandon. No, we shouldn't. We should just use what works for the case because it's not at the end of the day how you get the job done. It's the cool things that we make and doing it that really matters. Well, I hope that this has been a fun discussion for you. I need to get back to work on PrintQuest. I got some manuals to write and a Kickstarter to write and oh boy, I am not getting a lot of sleep these days, but I am really enjoying the work that I'm doing with it and I can't wait to show it to you. And if you wanna check it out, there will be a link in the description, but I want to thank you very much for watching. And I wanna remind you that you are a child of a loving father in heaven. So you're special to him, so you're special to me to take care of yourself. And if you can, find someone else to take care of. We all need each other these days. I'll see you next time.